President of the Democratic Socialist Republic of Sri Lanka, Her Excellency Sheikh Hasina, Prime Minister of the People's Republic of Bangladesh, Right Honorable K.P. Sharma Oli, Prime Minister of the Federal Democratic Republic of Nepal, His Excellency Dr. Lote Shering, Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Bhutan, and His Excellency Dr. Zafar Mirza, Minister of State for Health of the Islamic Republic of Pakistan. Also present is His Excellency Isala Virakun, Secretary General of the SARC. To begin the program, I have the honor to invite the Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi ji, for his introductory remarks and thereafter for conducting the proceedings. Excellency, Namaskar. I would like to thank you all for joining this special interaction. I especially thank our friend Prime Minister Oli who had joined us almost immediately after his recent surgery. I wish him a speedy recovery. I would also like to congratulate President Ashraf Ghani for his recent re-election. I welcome the new Secretary General of SAR, who is also with us today. I also acknowledge the presence of the director of the SAR Disaster Management Center from Gandhinagar. Excellencies, as we all know, COVID-19 has recently been classified by the World Health Organization, WHO, as a pandemic. So far, our SARC region has listed fewer than 150 cases. But we need to remain vigilant. Our SARC region is home to nearly one-fifth of all humanity. It is densely populated. Our SAR region is home to nearly one-fifth of all humanity. It is densely populated as developing all of us have significant challenges in terms of access to healthcare facilities. Our people-to-people -people ties are ancient and our society deeply interconnected. Therefore, we must all prepare together. We must all act together and we must all succeed together. Excellencies, as we prepare to face this challenge, let me briefly share India's experience of combating the spread of this virus so far. Prepare, but do not panic, has been our guiding mantra. We were careful to while also gradually increasing restrictions on travel. The step-by-step -step approach has helped avoid panic. We have increased our public awareness campaigns on TV, print and social media. We have made special efforts to reach out to vulnerable groups. We have worked to quickly ramp up capacity in our system, including through training our medical staff across the country. 
we have also increased diagnostic capabilities within two months we moved from one major facility for pan india testing to more than 66 such such labs and we have developed protocols for each stage of managing this pandemic for screening at entry points contact tracing of suspected cases quarantine and management of isolation facilities and for discharge of cleared cases we also responded to the call of our people abroad we evacuated nearly 1400 indians from different countries we also similarly helped some of the citizens of our neighboring countries we have now built our a, a protocol for such evacuations including carrying out testing by our mobile teams deploy abroad we recognize that other countries would be also concerned about their citizens in india so we beep foreign ambassadors about the states uh, about the steps we were taking excellencies we fully recognize that we are still in an unknown certainty how the situation will unfold despite our best efforts you must also be facing similar concerns this is why it would be most valuable for all of us to share our perspectives i look forward to hearing your views thank you thank you very much i now request his excellency president gani to share his thoughts with us Thank you for taking this very important initiative. All that is normal is disrupted, and all that seems solid is melting into thin air. We are in unknown territory, and our vulnerability, Excellency, comes from our openness. Our greatest vulnerability is that we have an open border with Iran, one of the major centers, and the flow cannot be stopped. And the province of Iraq has become the central node uh, for, for preventing the spread and diffusion of this deadly disease to the rest of South Asia. I have the following five proposals. One, modeling of diffusion impacts and scenarios for management. Unless we model the diffusion, uh, we will be facing assumptions from China or the United States or Iran are not suitable to our situation. I request the task force of SARC to be able to do this. Second, telemedicine, because the second and third order impact of this, particularly on poor and vulnerable and women, is very significant. If we could create a common framework for telemedicine for diagnosis of related issues and as advances take place, how to be able to coordinate. Third, as a landlocked country, which is simultaneously uh, the heart of Asia, closeness, closing of borders were essential will result in significant problems regarding availability of medicine.
and basic goods can be coordinated to be able to create controlled flows that both allows transactions to take place uh, while focusing on the essentials. The fourth issue for us, Excellencies, because uh, in all Excellency, because we have cancelled schools, prayers have been stopped. How do we keep women, youth, and children occupied? Since India, in particular, and South Asia, are leaders in distance education, in self learning, can the South satellite in India said prayers have been stopped. How do we keep women, youth, and children occupied? Since India, in particular, and South Asia, are leaders in distance education, in self learning, can the SOC satellite in India satellite be made available so we can keep people because social distancing that is necessary uh, cannot just take place. In my fifth proposal, uh, Prime Minister, Distinguished Prime Minister, since India is both a very important member of SARC and a member of the Shanghai Council, Cooperation Council, in Shanghai, both with China, that is our deepest sympathies in Iran. Can we coordinate between SARC and the Shanghai Cooperation Council to your initiative? How much of the experience of China is replicable to our situations, and how do we both learn and help Iran? I thank you again for this opportunity. Uh, our conditions being one of the poorest countries in conflict prone require learning particularly from how you upscale uh, the existing program. We have a program across the country called Health, that is basic health, and if there are other countries that have upgraded their basic systems to cope with this, we'll be extremely grateful for learning and yet sharing our experience. Thank you, Excellency. Thank you. Thank you, Excellency. I now request His Excellency, President Soli, to make his remarks. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Good afternoon. I too wish to begin by thanking Prime Minister Modi for this timely call for a regional initiative to combat the increasing threat of COVID-19 in the Sahak region. In times of crisis, we do come together. In 2003, for example, when the region faced the threat of SARS, the Maldives took the initiative and hosted an extraordinary meeting of SARC health ministers that adopted a regional common strategy for tackling the virus. No country on its own can succeed in combating the virus. It requires a shared response at an unprecedented scale. The first COVID-19 case was confirmed in the Maldives on 7 March. To date, there are 13 confirmed cases. Fortunately, no deaths so far. Since January this year, the Maldives has been taking steps to get ready for a possible outbreak. We set in place standard operational procedures and facilities for treatment and quarantine in various islands. In the event of major outbreak in the country, our health facilities will have to cope with the care needed for both our residents and the thousands of tourists who visit the Maldives every year. Our priority now is to use precautionary measures to contain the virus as much as possible so as not to overburden our limited resources.